You came through the ice apocalypse. <laughs> you are here. We are glad that you're here and glad that you're safe. Um, we're excited for today and what God's going to do. And so we're just going to enter into a time of worship together. So you have plenty of room to dance and to just worship freely the Lord who is worthy. Amen. Well, Lord, we love you so much, and we thank you for this opportunity to come into your presence and to just worship you. You are so worthy of our praise. Yes, you are. And God, today our hearts do open to the sun of love. Yes. Like unfolding flowers, God, we just open up to you, to your love today, to whatever you want to do today, whatever you want to speak today. We open our hearts to you, God. Have your way in this place. Have your way in these moments together. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. 
one of the words for praise in the New Testament is to tell a story, and it's kind of testifying, giving our testimony to the Lord. So we're just going to play this again, and I want you just to talk to God. Just tell God how appreciative you are of Him. And just recount the story of your salvation. Of when God reached down and rescued you. So let's just take a moment here as we close our, our musical worship time. And God, we just thank you. We give you all the glory. You rescued us, Lord. You rescued me. God, I thank you. I thank you for deliverance. I thank you for freedom. I thank you for your pursuit of my heart, Jesus. Just love him here. Just take a moment and just worship him with your own words. Maybe a song that just spring up out of your spirit. Just sing it to the Lord. I love you, Lord. I thank you for freedom today. Thank you for your freedom today, Jesus. I thank you. I exalt your name amongst the brethren. I worship the Lord. I boast of the goodness of God. You rescued me. You rescued me. You rescued me. You rescued me. I will boast of you. 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 for you Lord if it wasn't for you we would still be in our brokenness Lord if it wasn't for you we would still be in our shame we'd still be in our guilt we'd still be in our remorse but Jesus but Jesus but Jesus but Jesus but Jesus, but Jesus. oh Oh, but Jesus. And just for a few moments, just reflect on Jesus coming and rewriting your story. Ah, how can we not praise you? Mm. Mm. Ah, God, we exalt you this day. God, we give you glory and honor. The fruit of our lips shall be praised, our God. The fruit of our lips shall be praised, our God.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I hear the Lord responding. He's saying, this is no time to retreat. This is no time to look back. It's a time for pressing in. There is more I want to do. This is no time for retreat. This is no time for looking back. There is so much I want to do. There's so much more I want to do. Open your eyes and look and see. I will show you great and mighty things. Open your eyes and see. There's so much I want to do. Everything I've done until now has been to prepare you for this time in your life and as a people. Raise the level of your expectation. Lift your eyes. Shake off the lies and the weariness. Set your feet firmly on the path I've called you to. No looking back. No retreat. It's full advance. It's full advance, my child. You have no idea how good the more is that I intend to do for you and for you as a people. There's more to the story. <laughs> There's more to the story. It's going to bring him great glory. Oh, the best is yet to come. He's not even close to being done. Oh, there's more to the story. There is more to the story. John, I just see the Lord. I just see a pouring out of like gold. On you, like this, just an outpouring of anointing on you. You're going to walk in a new season, and you're going to see things that you've desired. There's going to be an anointing that's going to break it forth. I just, I just see this, just this tunnel of glory pouring all over you this morning, brother. Whew. Praise you, Lord. There's more. There's more. There's more to the story to bring you glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I really sense it's not about trying to mm. dig up old dreams at this time. Mm. He has new dreams. Mm. He has new secrets to reveal. Mm. He has new mm. things he wants you to imagine mm. that he could do. Mm. Mm. So that's why he said... Open your eyes and see. Mm -hmm. See afresh. See with new eyes. Mm -hmm. See with an open heart and an open mind. Hallelujah. Be open to what he wants Hallelujah. to do. Because it's more than you thought. Mm -hmm. It's more than you thought. Mm -hmm. It's more than you imagined. Mm -hmm. So open your eyes. Jesus, just worship you, Lord. Worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, amen. You can be seated this morning. Hallelujah. just a couple of things before we get ready to receive our, our offering for the Lord today. Uh, this Friday night coming up is the ladies' Christmas tea. 
It's a, just a powerful outreach opportunity for us as a body. And uh, if you're not here and if you're watching via Facebook, you can call tomorrow and get your tickets. But they're going to be in the back where you can grab some tickets. I encourage you to grab some for some of your friends that you invite to come. And uh, it's this Friday night. Uh, there's a booth or there's a table in the back you can connect with. This is always just an incredible time for ladies to come together, hear the gospel, and for God to do something in each and every life. It's a great outreach opportunity. So I encourage everybody to, to be a part of that. Go with me, if you will, before we take our offering today to Genesis chapter 2. I'm going to do about a 30-minute message here before we uh, no. Just want to share just a couple of things. Uh, Christmas journey, we're going to have a work day next Saturday. And then uh, also this week, I'd, I'd love to see us fast and pray. And uh, how many here would be willing to fast one day for the Christmas journey this week? Uh, amen. There's, there's out on the Christmas journey table, there are prayer points that Margaret Brady, our prayer leader for the journey, has put together. We would love to have you on the day you fast and pray. And everybody, if you're not fasting, be, grab one of those sheets, or we will post it on our website where you can go there. We want to this week just bathe it in serious prayer. I know Margaret's already been doing it with the prayer team, sending things out. But I wanted to grab us as a congregation that this week we would set aside this week for fasting and prayer, that God would move in lives. And Margaret just has done a great job putting together a list there of prayer points for us. Genesis chapter 2, verse number 15 through 17. It says, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. So what are we dealing with here? God's giving provision to man, right? He says, Of every tree you can eat. He's speaking about provision for them. And then in verse 18, And the Lord God said, It is, whoops, excuse me, verse 17. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. So there was a portion they were not to take and eat themselves. It was to be set aside. It was obedience that was happening here. It was God's portion that they were not to take. That they were not to take. This is the beginning of a picture of God's call for us to be givers. There's a portion of what God gives us as provision that belongs to God. That belongs to God. And we see it here in the book of Genesis. I can remember when Carla and I, we started being youth pastors at Coleman Assembly, and we were making $10 a week. I did say that right. $10 a week we were making. And we were faithful. We tithe the one because it belonged to God. It was his portion. We had a car given to us when we didn't have a vehicle. We had fuel oil put in our fuel tank. I don't know how we did it. Carla got a job at a restaurant, was able to bring home the leftovers at night, and we were just rejoicing in Jesus for the leftovers from the restaurant. I'm telling you, as we honor God, God will make a way for us. Brothers and sisters, over the next year, I just want to take walk from Genesis all the way to Revelation each week and take just a couple of moments to show you God's pattern for us to be givers because God wants us free in every area of our life. He says, all of these are yours. It's for your provision. This part, set aside. What happens as we do that? We declare his lordship, and we involve God in our finances. And there's been times we needed a whole lot of God help in our finances. But he's faithful. But he's faithful. Let's pray as we give this morning. I want us just to hold up our offering today. We're going to go to our announcements, but... I want you just to make a declaration with me. Lord, I declare you are Lord over my finances. Come on, a little more fire in your bones. Lord, I declare you are Lord over my finances. Hallelujah. You are the God who supplies every one of my needs. According to your riches in glory. How many want to tap into God's riches? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Father, we just release this offering today. Say, let it go to bring glory to your name, to proclaim the gospel, and for people to come to the knowledge of Jesus. Amen. Grow us up, Lord. Amen.
Welcome to church and welcome to the wonderful season of Christmas. Where the reason for the season is Jesus. If this is your first time or many times, you'll find fellowship, growth, and community with the love of God. Welcome to church. Welcome, welcome to, to the Potter's House. The Food Pantry, our wonderful food outreach to our community, is looking for some volunteers to be part of this great ministry. Jesus said to feed the hungry, and this truly is a great way to be the hands and feet of Jesus to our neighbors that might need a little extra help. If you can spare a few hours on the third Friday or Saturday or Sunday, just once a month or every other month, then the food pantry is the place for you. The food pantry needs someone with a truck that can help pick up the food orders for Myers. They also need those that can help carry and stock and, of course, distribute the food on that Sunday. Please sign up at the Connection Center or contact the church office. There's no greater joy than seeing someone blessed physically and spiritually. The food pantry does both. Thank you, Chica Hammock, for overseeing this important ministry. We appreciate you. Just a note that our Wednesday night service on December 11th will be canceled to get ready for the Christmas journey. Um, did you say get ready, get ready, get ready? Why, yes I did. <laughs> it is time to get ready for the Christmas journey that will be presented on the church grounds on Friday, December 13th and Saturday, December 14th. Yes, the journey begins at 6 p.m. with tours leaving every 15 minutes until 8.30 p.m. Be sure to pick up some flyers and postcards in the lobby to give to your family, your friends, your neighbors, or even complete strangers. <laughs> this is going to be a journey to remember. This is the Christmas journey, celebrating the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Get ready. Did you mean, get ready, get ready, get ready? Ah, uh, yes, that is exactly <laughs> what I meant. The Christmas journey, December 13th and 14th. Get ready. Get ready. Hello, ladies. It's almost time for the ladies' Christmas tea. I can hardly wait to see the beautiful decorated tables, colorful lights, cookies, fun outfits, and wonderful prizes. Ladies, this is the lasting memory of fellowship and love centered on the birth of our Savior Jesus. Sign up today at the table in the foyer. This is the last Sunday today to get all your people signed up. The tea is this Friday with the doors opening at 530 and the joyous celebration begins at Six. I am so excited. We have a great speaker coming. We have special musical guests that will bring the Christmas house down. Many of you may remember Family Affair. Yes, they're coming. I am getting ready. I'm getting ready. I am getting so ready for the wonderful Christmas tea this Friday. I'll see you there. Well, if you did not sign up on the friendship pads at the end of the aisles, feel free to do that. While I introduce, we have a special guest today. Um, Lori Sherman is going to come and share some original poetry. So let's welcome her as she comes. Today I'd like to share with you a journey that began long ago with words. Words have power to lift up or to destroy. Whose words will you follow? Whose words will fill your heart? When words of destruction flow through your life, will you hold them tight or brush them away as you look for the light? The light of God's word brings strength and delight driving away the enemy at night. Words have power to lift up or to destroy. More than 30 years ago, words spoken in a phone conversation left me with a choice. Do I run from God or to him? Do I shake my fist and turn my back or do I pour out my heartache to God and let him wrap his arms around me? On a cold winter day, my husband went to work while I took our 18-month-old to a family gathering. While there, I received the call no one wants to hear. Lori, there's been an accident. And in my heart, I'm thinking, he's hurt. How bad? 
Did he lose an arm, a leg? What hospital? And while these thoughts raced through my mind, I heard words that changed my life forever. He's dead. I quietly asked the caller if he was sure it was my husband, and his word, just as quietly, was yes. I was 26, had an 18-month-old son, was three months pregnant with our second son, and was a stay-at-home mom. My world ended with those words, and I was afraid. For where would our next meal come from? How would we survive? How could I be a good parent to two babies on my own? How was I going to survive childbirth without my husband by my side? Yes, I was afraid, for how could I keep us safe? Then God gave me his word, Psalms 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Words have power to lift up or to destroy. When words of destruction flow through your life, will you hold them tight or brush them away as you look for the light? The light of God's word brings strength and delight, driving away the enemy at night. Once more, God gave me his word, a promise to drive out the fear racing through my heart. Psalms 4, 8. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. I held on to those words, God's promise, as I cried myself to sleep, holding my Bible close, repeatedly saying this verse, trying to feel strong, trying to feel safe, while the love of my life, my best friend, was gone. Words have power. Whose voice will you hear when late at night you are crying out tears? Words have power. Whose voice will you hear? Seven months pregnant, camping with family, feeling like God is nowhere and that he does not care. As Grandma watched my son nap, I went to fish. I didn't want fish. I wanted to cry alone. In my sorrow, I poured out my heart. God, where are you? Do you even care? Do you know that my heart is broken and that I am lost in sorrow? If you are there, if you care about me, if you are still in control, then let me catch a fish. I don't care if it's not a keeper. I just need to know that you are still there because my heart is broken and I feel lost. I sat on the dock and held my baitless rod above the water and cried. I cried for what was lost. I cried for not knowing what was to come. I cried because I was afraid. And God spoke to a fish to jump out of the water and grab my baitless hook. Words to a fish had the power to lift my heart that day. That day, I began to climb up the side of that pit of sorrow. That day, I knew I knew in my heart God was still in control, and though it would be years before I was totally out of the pit and felt my feet on solid ground, I knew God's word I would choose. Words, they have power to lift up or to destroy. Psalms 40, 1 through 3, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Words have power to lift up or to destroy. When words of destruction flow through your life, will you hold them tight or brush them away as you look for the light? The light of God's word brings strength and delight, driving away the enemy at night. Words have power. Choose you this day. Whose words will you follow to the end of your days? Wow. 
What an awesome testimony. The power of God's words. Amen. We'll go ahead and greet a few people today before we begin. Well, we are in a new series starting today, and it's called The Gift. And so we're going to begin in the book of Luke, chapter 2, if you want to turn your Bibles there. I don't know about your family, but my family loves gifts. And every Christmas morning, my kids wake up so excited. And my husband will tell you that I am just like the kids. I can barely sleep the night before after all of the coupon clipping and the late night wrapping and the counting and the recounting and the stealth detective work to figure out what they needed all year and to gather up. I love the clearance aisle at Walmart. I don't know if any of you guys know that that's a thing. But, oh, man, every week I'm walking that thing looking for Christmas presents. And after all of that, to see their faces and to see how excited that they are for Christmas, it just blesses my heart. And when we were kids, my brothers and I, we knew that there was a rule in our home that you could not wake up the parents until 6 a.m. And so we would begin getting up around 4 and checking the clock on the stove in the kitchen. Four, and then you go back, close your eyes, and you think it's been an hour, and it's like 4.07, and then you just keep going. And, and so one day in particular, one Christmas morning, the lights went out in all of Mount Pleasant. And we were living down here at the end of the road, and we're like, what are we going to do? We don't even know what time it is. It's probably 6. It'll be fine. Because um, we had no clock. And then we're like, what are we going to do when we wake them up? And it's dark. They're going to tell us to go back to bed. So we went around the house and we gathered up every candle my mom owned. We went through every door, every drawer, like everything we could find. And we gathered them up and we lit them all in the living room so that when we woke them up, there would be no excuses and we could open those presents. And we did, but we also spent like the rest of the year picking wax off of the carpets of the house 
And I thought of that story a few years ago because our kids know mom and dad are going to need some coffee before you open those presents because we're about to take 47 toys apart and add batteries. And so we need a minute, you know? And so they thought, hey, we'll make the coffee for them. What we drank that morning was not coffee. <laughs> when I think about what we drank, I think about what they use to fill potholes in Michigan. <laughs> I mean, it was soot. It was this black, tarry substance. No creamer, no sugar was going to save that. Um, but we were real awake the rest of the day, chewing on those grounds in our teeth. Man, but they were just so excited. Christmas morning is just exciting. It doesn't matter your age. There's just an excitement that comes with the gifts. And my kids have never disappointed me. And I have actually a video that I want to show you of two of my boys last year. They received a deer blind, and this was their reaction, okay? So here we go. And this continued for about five minutes, over and over again. Wah, wah, wah. My babies did not disappoint. They did not disappoint. They love, love, loved receiving that gift. And I'm sure you've heard of cheerful givers. We hear about that in scripture. But my boys are cheerful receivers. And that's what I want to talk about for the next few weeks. I want to talk about the receiving of the gift. So, Lord, today we just open our hearts wide to you. In these next few moments, we welcome you to speak to us. God, I so willingly step out of the way, and I give you center stage. Let it be your voice. Let it be your words. Let it be your heart. In Jesus' name, amen. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that he, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And this truth, this love, this gift is at the very heart of Christmas and it's at the very center of our faith as followers of Jesus. Isaiah 9, 6 declares, for unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given. That word given is the word Nathan and it means to ascribe, bestow, to grant, to pour out, and to shoot forth. So for unto us, a son was ascribed, bestowed, and granted. For us, he was poured out and shot forth from the heavens. For us. For us. What an incredible gift. The word gift in the Webster's Dictionary is defined as this, a thing willingly given without payment. This Jesus, this gift of love was given and bestowed on us willingly and freely by the Father in heaven. Turn with me to Luke 2, 1 through 20. It says, in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. 
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those who with whom he is pleased. When the angel went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning Concerning this child, and all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all of these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Christmas story is full of choices that were made. Over and over and over again, people had to decide what would they do with this Jesus. What would they do? with this gift that had been given. Mary had to decide, would she carry him? Joseph had to decide, would he accept him? The innkeeper had to decide, would he make room for him? The wise men had to decide, would they go in search of him? And the shepherds. In verse 9, they encounter the glory of the Lord, and they hear the good news of Jesus in verse 10. Then in verse 11, they find that the gift has been given. For today in the city of David was born, was brought forth for you a Savior, that is Christ the Lord. And now they must decide for themselves, what will they do with this Jesus? What will they do with this gift? And we must all answer the same question. Every single one of us must decide. And there's a difference between a gift being given and a gift being received. There's a difference between a gift that is given and a gift that is received. What will you do with the gift that has been given? John 1. John 1, verse 11. This is speaking of Jesus. And it says in verse 11, He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who laid hold of this gift, who believed in his name. He gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. James 1.11 tells us that not all received him. Some rejected the gift, but as many as did receive him, they became the sons, the children of God. And this is where it all begins. We must decide, will we receive the gift? Will we receive the gift? The word receive is the word lumbano, and it means to take, to lay hold of in order to use it, to take it up and carry it, to make it your own, to claim it for yourself, to take it and not let go, to choose it. When I think of the word, take hold of it, receive it, I think of a woman shopping on Black Friday. I went one time with my husband's family. We just got engaged. We got up early. We went out. We were in Fort Wayne. It's much bigger than Mount Pleasant. And I just looked. I just wanted to pick it up and look at it. I didn't have no money. I didn't want to buy it. And I reached for this thing, this toy, and this woman snatched it out of my hands, put it in like this, and ran to the checkout. And when I think of the word receive and lay hold of, I think of that woman. She laid hold of it. She took it as her own. It was going to be hers, and I wasn't going to take it. And I just stood there. What just happened? But it says, as many as received him, who lay hold of him, who take him as their own, who take and do not let go, to claim for yourself, who choose him, they will become the sons of God. We will have the right 
to sonship. And that word right is the word power, the regal authority, the crown of sons, which are genuine children, true offspring, and the begotten of God. You see, sonship is one of the gifts within the gift. And that's the beautiful thing about Jesus. Because you see, when we receive Jesus, we receive him, but we also receive all of these gifts within the gift. And one of the gifts that he bestows on us is the right to sonship. We are crowned with regal authority as the sons and daughters of the I am that I am. And this is important because the word means genuine sons. When I tell people about my children, and, and, and most of you, if not all of you, know our story. We've been blessed to adopt 10 of our children of the 14. I don't go around saying, these are my adopted children, and these are my children from my stomach. I say, these are my children. I don't see a difference. There's not, th this group doesn't get more of the inheritance. I mean, they're getting a buck 75. It's not like, you know, <laughs> you got that many. That's about it. But I don't say you get more than this group. You get gifts. You don't get gifts. You get to go to Disney World. You have to stay home. They're my children. And I think sometimes we get that wrong in our heads. And here's Jesus, the begotten, and then over here there's us, the other children. But the Bible says that when we receive Jesus, we receive the crown, the regal authority of a genuine child of the I am. That's who we are. That's who you are. That's who I am. We are the genuine child of the I am. In receiving Jesus, I receive all of the rights and all of the privileges of a true heir and offspring of the Most High God. When I go into my parents' house, I walk in, throw my shoes off, grab one of my dad's sweatshirts right out of his closet, get in the fridge, find the leftovers, kick back on the chair, drink some of their coffee from their mugs. I mean, this is home. This is mom and dad's house. I am a genuine child of the Ives family. So when I go in, I don't go in as a guest. I walk in their home and it's my home. I don't tiptoe around or question if they're going to be mad if I, if I touch that. You are genuine children of the I am. You're not guests at his house. He has a place for you at his table. That's who you are. You know, we see all the royals on TV, and you never see them walking around. They've always got their shoulders back. They've always got this way about them. They've, their head held high. Why? Because they know who they are. They're not just anybody. They are. A royal heir. And I wonder sometimes if we know that about ourselves. Because so often I see us when we were given the rights to sonship. Regal, royal authority as genuine children of the I am that I am. That's a gift that's been given to us when we receive Jesus. It's the gift within the gift. We get to be the genuine child of the I am that I am. We're not a guest in his house. We are his child. 1 John 3, 1 says, what manner of love is this? What category of love is this that we should be called the children of God? That's who we are. That's who we are. That's the gift that we've been given. To walk with our heads held high. To face every situation in life knowing my daddy's got me. Knowing I have a father who loves me. 
He loved me so much, he paid the highest cost so that I could be a genuine child of the I am that I am. Every, every situation, every struggle we face, we face it as a child of the I am. And Romans 8, 17, it says, and I'm going to read this from the Passion Translation because it's so good. And since we are his true children, we qualify to share all his treasures. And since we are his true children, his true children, genuine children of the I am that I am, we qualify to to share all of his treasures. For indeed, we are heirs of God himself. And since we are joined to Christ, we ain't getting no buck 75. We get the whole kingdom. I mean, come on. This is who we are. We are heirs of God himself. And since we are joined to Christ, we, we also inherit all that he is and all that he has. And since we are joined to Christ, we inherit all that he is and all that he has. That's our inheritance in Christ. That's who we are. As we receive Christ, as we lay hold of him, we lay hold of sonship. We are crowned with the regal authority and the power and the rights of a son of God, a daughter of the I am that I am. This is a gift This is not a reward. And it's so important that we understand this truth. This is a gift. It is not a reward. When I give gifts on Christmas morning, I don't ask my children to go around the house and clean it first, make a breakfast casserole, rub my feet, do all my chores, make my coffee, fold the laundry, and then they can open a present. It's not a reward for good behavior. It's a gift of love. And it's so important that we understand that, that it's a gift. It is not a reward. It's a gift. It is not a reward. Gifts are given as an expression of love, not as a reward for good behavior. They are not earned. They are not earned. God knows you don't deserve it. Just breathe that in. God knows you don't deserve it. It's never been about if you deserve it. It's just been about how much he loves you. And what he sees when he looks at you. That's what it's always been about. It's not about if you deserve it. He knows you don't. He knows you don't. A gift has more to do with the love of the giver, that the the love the giver has for the receiver than how deserving the receiver is of the gift. A gift has more to do with the love the giver has for the receiver than how deserving the receiver is of the gift. This gift, this Jesus, and the gifts within the gift, this gift of sonship, all of this is a love gift that was willingly and freely given to us from our Father. For God so loved the world that he gave his Son. And if we will receive it, really lay hold of it, it changes everything. It changes everything. You are not alone. You are not unwanted. You are not invisible. God of gods, king of kings, Lord of lords, broke into this natural world in a supernatural way. And for unto us 
a child was born. Unto us a son was given. He was shot forth from the heavens so that if you would receive him, you would be given the rights, the crown, the regal authority of a child of the I am that I am. Do you know who you are this morning? We pray that this holiday season you encounter the love of God. Next week, we're going to open this box again, and a whole lot of papers are going to come out of it. But we're going to talk about, we, we tried to write a book for you. I'm going to give it to you next week. But I, I, I had to stop at 11 pages, size 10 font, of all of the things that we receive in Christ. We started going through Scripture. I mean, 11 pages, size 10 font. We finally had to stop. I didn't go, okay, whoa, we're going to have to write, keep looking for him. Because it was just unbelievable, all of the things that are available to us in Christ. What an incredible gift we've been given. Do you know who you are? Do you know that you're loved? For us, this holiday season is about him and celebrating the gift and for him, this holiday season is a celebration of his love for us. That for God would so love the world that he would give this incredible gift so that we could be the children of God. I'm going to wrap up now. But I want to sing a song. And as I sing this song, I wanted to give us enough time because we're going to take communion. And I just think this is such a beautiful moment to take it. To look at the juice that reminds us of his blood. To look at the bread that reminds us of the body that was broken. This incredible gift that was given. That if we will receive it, we receive the rights to sonship. And so... I want to sing this song that we used to sing many years ago. And I just encourage you as you come to get your communion and then you find your way back to your seat, listen to the words. Listen to the heart of the Father. Because I really believe that he's going to sing over you and sing directly to your heart. And, and I really believe even as we take communion today, one of the things that I've been praying is that God would heal parts of our heart that have been broken and have felt the loss of a father's love. And that today we would encounter the love of the father, a father who loved us so much that he would give his son so that we could be his. And so... Um, if the hospitality team wants to come forward and then we'll, we'll line up and come get that communion.
Today we just take this juice and we take this bread. God, we just receive the gift that has been given to us. God, we look at these reminders in our hand of the, the price that was paid, the, the purchase price, so that we could stand here today genuine children of the I am that I am, crowned as sons and daughters of the King. And God, we start this holiday season with such an incredible thank you in our hearts for you. God, thank you for loving us like this. Just tell him in your own words right where you are, God, thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for loving me this much. Thank you for paying this price for me. Thank you for this gift. God, may we never lose that heart of gratitude. May we never lose sight of the wonder of your love. The wonders of your love, God. That God would so love us that he would send his son for us. God, I pray this Christmas that it would be just this awakening in our hearts of just gratitude and revelation of the depths of your love for us, God. We thank you for this gift. We take this bread and we take this juice and we receive it today with a thankful heart. In Jesus' name.
every head bowed and every eye closed. The Bible says in Romans that anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you're here today in this room and you have not received the gift of Jesus and you have not laid hold of him, I just want to open the opportunity that if you just raise your hand, we want to pray with you today. If there's anybody here in this room that has not received Jesus, and today you feel him pulling at your heart. And here's what I sense from the Lord to do today. As we wrap up, I felt like the Lord wanted, wanted one for us to be reminded as we walk through our days that we are sons and daughters of the I am that I am. That there were people here who felt like they were alone. God wanted to remind you that you are his child, that he's with you, that he's walking with you. He wanted to remind you how much he loves you. But I felt like there would be people here today and you did not have a father who loved you like Father God wants to love you. And there's some deep wounds in your heart or empty places within you. And I just felt like we're going to open the altars. I'm going to ask for the prayer team to come. But we want to pray with you today for you to encounter this amazing love of God and to leave today having received your place as a child of God. And just, I want to encourage you as you leave today, no matter what you face this week, face it with this in mind. I am crowned with the rights and the regal authority and the power of a son and a daughter of the I am that I am. I am wrapped in my Father's love. The best gift ever given was given for me. And whatever you face, face it with head held high and shoulders back. Walk like a royal. Talk like a royal. Act like a royal. Because that's who you are. That's who you are. So, Lord, we just thank you for this day. I pray you would bless everyone and keep them. Make your face shine upon them and give them peace. And I pray that you would be with them, safe travels on the way home. And all throughout this week, you would just bring reminders to us over and over and over again of who we are and what we've received in the gift of Jesus and help us to walk it out, help us to live it out in every moment, in every situation. God, when we feel discouraged, when we feel overwhelmed, when we feel anxiety trying to creep in, God, that that, that, that sonship would just rise in us. God, that, that awareness of who we are in you would just rise up in us and God our shoulders would go back and our heads would go high and we would walk like a royal and we would talk like a royal and we would face things knowing that our father loves us and our father is for us and if he be for us what can stand against us God, I pray that we would walk confidently, we would walk boldly, we would walk courageously as sons and daughters, genuine sons and daughters of the I am that I am. Would you say that with me? Say, I am a genuine child of the I am that I am. Say it again. Let's say it boldly. Say, I am a genuine child of the I am that I am. That's who we are. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. The altars are open. We'll see you again next week.